Hi, I decided to try a whole lot of experimental ways to make this rose. So cutting to the end first, was I successful? Yes, it ended up with a really nice rose. But was it due to my careful planning? Or was it due to sheer determination and the flexibility of this sort of project? First I prepared the resist. Little bit of detergent. Next I tried, first experiment, next I tried to put down some silk gauze thinking that would help to make the rose petals stronger. So hold on to that thought. Did the silk gauze work? You'll find out by the end of the video. So I've laid down the leaves as you've seen in my other videos and then I started putting the colour down. Do be careful to um, not put in too many dull colours because it ends up dirtying the whites. Next I've got a screwed up very light plastic shopping bag and I'm dipping that in water and using that. Experiment 2, here's the one with the sander. So this is my first attempt to use the sander. Watch carefully. Yep, that's a thin shopping bag. Yep. Not great, eh? Not really great at all. I think we can safely say this bit isn't working. So then I got my piece of leftover IKEA cupboard liner, which is really thick plastic with bubbles on it. And by holding it down very firmly, I was able to A, stop any water getting into the sanding machine and B, do the sanding. So I've stayed away from the edges. So see how some of it's flat and the rest is fluffy. Keep watching to see if that worked. Next experiment. I added on some extra wool to the base of the rose. I don't know why I did that because I've never been unhappy with how thick the base is. So I'm rolling up the wool very very carefully making sure that the leaves are on the outside because that's a big mistake anybody can make and I certainly have in the past and there's the end of the rose experiment four hand felt for only a short time I figured because I'd done the sanding I didn't need to do this part of the process as long I think I was wrong there. I think I still needed to either sand it or use the sander for a longer time or do this part for a longer time. Experiment five. What happens if you put the whole lot in the washing machine? I only did it for one cycle. I think I should have left it in the washing machine for a few cycles to be really effective. Here's the reveal. So the base has definitely felted. See how it's gone through that stocking? All the little wool fibers. Very firmly felted on the base. Big tick for the base. But what about the rest? Has that felted? Let's have a look. So it looks like the first leaves definitely felted. In fact they appear to have felted quite well. So as you've seen in the other videos I'm cutting away between these leaves because in the process they've got caught up with the others next to them. Now here comes the main part of the petals of the rose. Now that first one looks fine. Uh, but I can see that as I get around to the next part it's under felted. So can I fix an under felted rose? Can you see those little bits of silk chiffon? I think we can say safely say that part of the experiment didn't work at all. It just got bunched up. 
but I'm going to try it again sometime. So I'm left with some struggling silk chiffon draped in amongst the petals and some petals that are not so well felted as I want them to be. Do I leave that silk chiffon there or not? So I'm just trimming away the shapes and I'm using this olive oil soap because it's it evidently has a magic pH level that's really good for wool and much better on your hands and it does feel more gentle I must say I, I don't know why I don't use gloves I probably should so you can see I'm just very determinedly felting those leaves you can if you watch you can almost see it felt in front of you so I'm not taking no for an answer with this rose yeah that bit of uh, chiffon can go home <laughs> or in the bin <laughs> didn't work I probably should have used a wider piece of the chiffon so was the sanding a good idea? I think it was. We just got to remember, I think, to do it for longer than I did it for. I think the idea would be to hold the sander down for perhaps a count of six in each spot and not do it for too long overall. See how some of these these inside petals they're barely felted at all so I didn't do the right thing by them so now I have to hand work them if I had done it properly and there's another piece of that chiffon <laughs> see I'm doing this so that you don't have to <laughs> that's the that's the whole point of showing you something that doesn't work otherwise YouTube is far too magical there's all these artists and craftspeople who just make things perfectly every time. And that's not how it is with me. <laughs> I try new things and sometimes they're a disaster. But these roses seem to have a life of their own. They are quite determined to be successful one way or the other. So just to remind you at this point, I keep this as a sculpting exercise. And that's what it is and it's a case of wrangling these petals so that the overall shape at the end is a successful one successful in that it's pleasing for you to look at it and just a reminder too that to wear one of these roses is fantastic because it's so light it's never in the way it never pokes into you it's just really really light and no two roses are the same no one's ever going to have your rose instead of trimming all the um, wool away like I'm doing I could have just used less in the first place that might be the next experiment I do trying to make a smaller rose and lastly we get to stiffening the rose some of you will have seen that in my other videos as well I'm using PVA glue that's very watered down so it's almost like very runny cream not quite as thin as milk but a bit thicker than a bit lighter than cream and where could we be without colored pencils and there it is again so this rose was absolutely determined to survive. I hope you enjoyed this little exploration into what happens if we experiment. <music>